Hi, and uh, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. So, um, subject of today's little video is something I've been wanting, looking forward to for know, 20 years or more. Um, Tori Amos Scarlet's Walk finally is available on vinyl. Now, um, as any of you sort of regular viewers will know, I'm a bit of a kind of a prog fan and, um, you know, amongst, I think it's, it's, it's fairly common amongst sort of prog fans that, um, you know, Kate Bush and Tori Amos also feature, uh, quite high and hit the right, uh, hit the right, um, buttons, so to speak. And, uh, I think I've got almost all of her output on vinyl, uh, pretty much everything she's released on vinyl. Um, but there was a, there was two very notable exceptions in her catalogue um, that that she's never released on vinyl. Uh, that's uh, Scarlet's Walk here from two thousand and two, and also the Beekeeper, which I think was uh, was a year or two later, two thousand and three, two thousand and four, something like that. Um, and anyway, to to sort of cut a long story short, basically over the, over the course of um, definitely the last 10, 15 years, um, without question, those two albums have become my favorite Tori Amos albums. And by, you know, a reasonably small margin, um, Scarlet's Walk eclipsed the beekeeper for me. So Scarlet's Walk for me is the absolute, my absolute favorite Tori Amos album. It's kind of, um, you know, it's kind of proggy, it all flows together. It's a bit of a story um, about a sort of, a, you know, traveling around America. And um, obviously, as I say, it's never been released on, on vinyl before now. Now I have got, I bought it when it came out on CD. So I've got the original CD release. Um, there was a limited edition CD release with, um, you know, a whole bunch of little postcards and other bits and bobs. Um, and um, I'm not sure if it came with that or not, but I've done, you know, video CDs or some, some, you know, brief uh, bits of video and then Scarlet's Treasures or something. Um, I can't remember exactly whether these were individual releases or whether they were all part of this little boxed set. Uh, but nevertheless, I've got that. I mean, you know, and, um, the actual physical CD is in the loft because uh, basically I don't play uh, physical CDs anymore. I, I, I rip them and then play the files. That, um, that's just my way of doing it. But uh, anyway, so Scarlet's Walk, Tori Amos. Um, I would hugely recommend that you go out and buy the original CD. And I stress the original CD for, for very good reason because I had heard rumours over the last two or three years that um, she is planning to release Scarlet's Walk. Now, I'm not 100% certain, but I think this was analogue recorded. I'm not 100% um, certain, though, on that. Um, but uh, anyway, this was uh, recorded back in 2002, um, produced by Tori Amos herself. And uh, I thought it was, um, just look at this. Um, mastered by John Astley at Martian Eng Engineering Cornwall, which is her own studio down in Bude in Cornwall. And um, as I say, I mean, I think the, the CD version of Scarlet's Walk sounds amazing. It's not, I mean, it's not perfect. There's a bit of sort of harshness on it. There's, there's you know, it's, it's got that kind of hard, sort of slightly hard vocal sort of, um, quality to it but you know it's phenomenal music it's 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 her you know it's kind of the most proggy progressive um i think of all her albums and um you know i just absolutely love the music absolutely do do and it's it, it's funny for, for for many years um a well, good few years anyway the the cd has been my uh where i need a digital reference if i'm looking at listening to anything whether it's a, uh, a digital transport whether it's a cd transport whether it's a d to a converter 
uh, a digital cable, um, you know, or I'm just wanting to try a digital track, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to this. And the, um, you know, the tracks, the, I mean, Amber Waves, a sort of fairy tale, um, crazy carbon, um, I mean, just just those particular tracks there. Um, I mean, they're stunning. The, the, just an incredible, beautiful sound. Really, really incredible, beautiful sound. And um, I just love absolutely everything about the album. Now, what's really interesting is a couple of months ago, maybe a month ago, two months ago at most, a friend of mine um, in the sort of recording business uh, sent me a message and said, oh, have you heard? Um, they've remastered Scarlet's Walk. So no, I hadn't heard that. So I went on to Cubas and had a listen. And yep, it's been remastered in 2023 by the same mastering engineer who did it in the first place, John Astley. Um, and, you know, you kind of wonder whether if they just tried to refresh it, if they'd done this with a view to the fact that they got about to release it on vinyl. I just didn't know. This was a couple of months ago. Anyway, I had a listen to it. And um, my first impression was it was awful. Absolutely awful. Um, as I say, the original isn't perfect. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a CD. It's not perfect, but it's a bloody good sounding cd and astonishingly good music probably my most played cd full stop i mean it really is um and um it's kind of it's it's just like uh, so many things i've heard sort of remastered for dolby atmos remastered for this that the other remastered you know for you know just modern formats uh, so the remastering, which you can listen to on Cubas, or, or I, I presume you can go out and buy a new CD of, I don't know, but you, you know, you can certainly listen to it on Cubas, so I guess you can on Tidal and, and, and other streaming services, or go and buy it. But it's, um, it's kind of, it's, it's bigger and more spacious and more open, but it's got a real weird kind of phasiness to it. Um, and, and just sounds distorted, her vocal quality. Um, it's, um, it's, uh, it, it, it's, I don't know how I would describe it, but um, when I was listening to it, actually, it's funny, I do like my coffees. And um, I know, I know sometimes when you're, when you see a, you know, a video or someone's trying to describe the process of turning the milk, warming the milk, frothing the milk they'll they'll sort of refer to this sort of this it's tearing paper sort of kind of um sound and um it is weird there's there's this texture to her voice that that just reminds me of of, of tearing paper so sort of, it's it's just nasty and um Again, chatting to this friend of mine, he was he was saying, you know, he's in the recording business, and he just said it just sounds like digital distortion, di digital overload, just through and through, and and it 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 kind of does. It just um, it doesn't sound good. Um, and if you can, I mean, certainly on Cubas, I believe the the original mix uh, mastering i don't think it's been remixed by the way they don't say that so it's just remastered but the original 2020 the original 2002 mastering um i believe is still available uh say so i've got it stored on my hard drive as a, a 44.1 k uh rip cd rip uh, i've got the original cd up in the lot in the loft but um there's a, you know, like I said, a 2496, I think it is, version on Cubas of the of the new mastering. And you would think that would sound better, wouldn't you? You really would. Um, and it sounds, like I said, it sounds more spacious, more kind of hi-fi. I'm kind of referring back to the Hotel California video I've just done where, you know, the hi-fi-ness is, ah, it's a double-edged sword, you know. it's it's There's more space, there's more sort of ping-pongy kind of, but it just, it doesn't hang together. 
and 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 it's not anything like the incredibly enjoyable listen um so yeah i'd, I'd urge you go onto one of those download services uh, streaming services and have a listen to the original mix versus this new 2022 remix and see what you think um anyway that's kind of setting the scene and, uh, and it had me uh you know whetted my appetite for the forthcoming vinyl release uh which i you know i'd only been i'd only heard rumors of but then here we are it came out you know i, I see it, had, it has been released so i couldn't not buy it it wasn't very expensive it's less than 30 pounds it's a double album um and um i had to get it now let me just tell you a little about this. It's first of all, it's not a gatefold. Um, I put the LPs here in, in my preferred inner sleeve, so it's not a gatefold. Um, the the kind of artwork quality of the cover is pretty pretty mediocre, I must say. I'm not impressed with the overall quality of the cover. Um, the inners are quite nicely done. These inner sleeves, they are quite nicely done. Um, but if you love the album and you haven't already got it, I would look, see if you can find that original uh, kind of box set with all the postcards and posters and, and um, you know, extra material there. Uh, so, yeah, the cover's not, nothing to write home about, I would say. And then we've got two pieces of vinyl which, uh, here we go, have a look at that. Nice and flat, 180 gram, really well made pieces of vinyl. Um, but I do notice here we are, Miles Abbey Road, half speed, room 30, is that say? Yeah. So, there we go. So, there's a couple of issues here. First of all, uh, what we have is um, a phenomenal, uh, as I say, by by some margin, my favourite Tori Amos album ever. Beautifully produced and mixed and mastered back in 2002 by, uh, you know, well, Tori did all the production and um, John Astley did the mastering and he did a damn good do job in my opinion. And then revisited uh, 21 years later, same guy, and I just do not know what he's done to it. it, it it's it's um, it's kind of ruined. There's little bits of it that sound better, the little bits that sound more spacious and kind of actually kind of sound nice in the analog domain. Um, certain, but it's almost like little sound effects here and there you know there's, there's sort of you know bass notes or piano things here and there a bit of the drumming the sort of the you know the um is, is brought forward but um i've got to say i'm really not happy with the um the new 2023 mastery of this album um and then you you know, you listen to this compared with the uh, that new mastering. So, you know, we've got that. And then we're putting it through Miles Sherrill's half-speed um, half speed mastering, half-speed cutting process, which, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, I may be wrong, but I, I'm, you know, I'm certainly led to believe that that's a digital process. And um, it's just... I just think it just sounds processed. It, it, it's it's kind of nice to hear this music for the first time on a on an analog medium because there are certain aspects of it that that will sort of oh that's nice you know that is nice and, and for me as an absolute lover of this album you know spending I don't know what it cost me twenty eight pound twenty six pound something like that spending that amount of money on it it's 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 nothing it's you know, well, well, well worth having. I've been waiting for this for a long time, but there's two issues really here. One, 
I so wish they'd used the original masters to um, produce this vinyl cut. And I strongly think that, um, well, I, I mean, God, if, we'd, if they'd sent those original masters to um, Kevin Gray or Ryan Smith or someone like that, um, and just cut that, I think it would have sounded phenomenal. And as it is, it just sounds, um, it's interesting, you know, and I stress, I absolutely love this album. Um, it sounds interesting, but, you know, um, I can only recommend it if you're a Tori Amos fan and you absolutely love this album. Um, but if you haven't heard it, you know, you might want to get it if you're a completist, etc. But if you, you know, if, if having got this, you do like it, go and find yourself an original CD issue and listen to that. Because that, I think, shows the potential of, um, of this phenomenal composition. Absolutely phenomenal and, um, and quite beautiful original mastering job. So, um, you know, if Tori, uh, if Tori Amos or, um, I've forgotten his name now, if Tori Amos or uh, John Astley are watching, you know, apologies for um, not being impressed with your uh, work on this one. Um, I really have to say, I'm, I'm massively impressed with your original work on it. I just, um, I'm not impressed with what's, what this sounds like. It just, it's, you know, I mentioned the sort of paper tearing kind of quality to the voice, but the rest of it, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's like you've got earwax in your ears. There's this phasey kind of unpleasantness going on. Um, and uh, yeah, just a big shame. A real, real big shame. So um, anyway, a little, uh, a little bit one that, that's uh, slightly uh, more unusual for me, I guess. Um, you know, one of my favourite artists, my favourite of her albums, and um, you know, after twenty-one years, finally available on vinyl. And uh, I, I can only recommend it if you're a, you know, an absolute completist. Frankly, I would not recommend it on its sound quality. Um, but the album, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but go out and buy it on CD. Okay, on that note, I'll say cheerio for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.